So today we're going to talk about seven tips for using hashtags on Giving Tuesday, you know, for your Giving Tuesday campaign. If you're not familiar with a hashtag, let me just describe it briefly. It's those things that you see on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook that have a little number sign. It's a little hash. They call it a hashtag. And so you can create a hashtag simply by typing that number sign right before a word, right? So let's say that you have the word Giving Tuesday. You put a hashtag in front of it. You hit enter. You know, when you're typing that into Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and automatically it will create a link. So basically what a hashtag does is it creates a link to every single other tweet or post that includes that hashtag, right? So it's a really great way to kind of collect and pull, pull together information related to a specific campaign, okay? So let me give you a few tips for using hashtags on Giving Tuesday. Uh, the first is to research the trending hashtags that are already being used in your community, okay? So if you do a little bit of research, you can find out what hashtags people are commonly using when they're talking about your cause. And there are a couple of really great tools to help you do that. One is hashtagify me, hashtagify me. And then the other one is hashtagging. What I like about hashtagify me is that you can look at related hashtags. So the screenshot at the bottom is the hashtag is actually diabetes, right? And it's showing you all the popular and related hashtags based on the use, the prevalence of those other hashtags appearing in a tweet that uses the diabetes hashtag. Okay, so those are related hashtags. And then the one before is really talking about um, <clears throat> how popular it is or what kind of exposure and reach particular hashtags are getting. So the first step, again, is to listen first. You really have to understand what hashtags are people using already <clears throat> because you want to be part of those conversations. You don't want to just blindly make up a hashtag and then go forward and start posting stuff that is come, going to come across as tone deaf. Okay, geez, this person really doesn't really know what our community is about. Uh, so it's always good to listen first, find out what's trending and what's popular and what people are really talking about. What are the subtopics within your community, I guess, okay? Uh, the second tip is to keep it simple. So when you do create a hashtag, and again, you just type in the number sign, whatever word you want, you know, uh, it should be sh simple, it should be short, and it should be relevant to your cause. It should also be easy to remember, all right? So you don't want to have a really complicated hashtag with numbers and, so you know, different words and whatnot. And, and and it means something to you, but it doesn't really mean something to the community, and it's not easy to remember, okay? So there was a campaign last year uh, that used the hashtag FTK. Fairly easy to remember, very short, very simple. FTK meant for the kids, for the kids. So there's various different organizations raising money and creating awareness about uh, issues related to kids. It kind of started with one cause, and then it expanded uh, and now the hashtag is, is uh, more generally used for the kids, okay, FTK, all right? Number three, you have to be prepared to go beyond Twitter. Hashtags work on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, so hashtags originated because of Twitter about eight years ago, but they're now used by, you know, used on Facebook, not that much on Facebook, but they're definitely used on Instagram and Twitter. Those are the places where you're gonna find hashtags used a lot, okay? Uh, so the party, as I say here, the party will spill out into Instagram and Facebook, and that really gets into another issue, not an issue, but another phenomena, I guess, or, you know, thing to keep in mind when you're preparing for any sort of campaign is that people generally won't do what you tell them to do, okay? Especially if the instructions are complicated. If you say, oh, well, include this hashtag and this other hashtag and also make sure you have a link to our website. And before you do all that stuff, you have to follow us on Twitter too. People are just gonna ignore that. They're gonna go with their gut, they're gonna go with their passion and they're just gonna, remember what is uh, what they think is important, right? So that's why I keep the hashtag simple. If you say, hey, post your photo on Instagram, they're gonna say, great, and what do they do? They post it on Twitter, they're gonna post it on Facebook, 
hopefully they'll use the hashtag, okay? Uh, <clears throat> you also wanna track mentions. So while a campaign is happening, and in this case, we're talking about Giving Tuesday, you have to have your ear to the ground the whole time. <clears throat> you have to be able to track mentions, see how people are using it, see what's trending, and be part of those discussions as well. And there are some really great tools to help you do that. So there's Mention, which I recommend. Mention actually will help you get alerts from really any social media site or even a forum, right? Uh, right now we're talking about Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Mention has got you covered. It will send you an e email notification about mentions, all right? The other one that you wanna use specifically for Twitter is Tweet Chat. So Tweet Chat, you can simply set up a room on Tweet Chat and enter your hashtag and you can easily and quickly reply to people while the uh, campaign is happening, okay? Uh, you wanna promote your hashtag, so don't forget, if you have a really great idea for a hashtag and you are, that's your strategy is to encourage your community to post photos uh, about your cause or about a specific topic within your cause, say dog pictures, or this is what, this is what winning over cancer means. This is what it looks like. Here's my newly adopted dog. Um, here's how, here's the, the healthy food that we're cooking. Right? people taking pictures of food and posting that. Whatever it might be, it, you know, it's obviously gonna be related to your cause, but make sure that you promote this campaign. Don't just say, well, we have the hashtag and we're kind of following people and we're tweeting at people, but uh, not much is happening. The reason why not much is happening is because you didn't tell the people who care the most. The people who care the most are already in your database. There are your supporters, volunteers, subscribers, donors and so forth. So make sure that you're using your, your various different channels, your marketing channels to promote this hashtag campaign. Um, if, with email specifically, email is the way to really, really galvanize your core community uh, around a campaign like this. So you might wanna send one, two, three emails. You know, in fact, create a sequence, a drip campaign if you want to, to announce the campaign, here's what's happening. There's gonna be a second one and a couple of days before, hopefully, right? The second one on the day of Giving Tuesday. Hey, guys, remember we had this incredible campaign and then one update during the day by email. This is all by email, okay? So promote the hashtag. Don't forget about that to do that. Engage when you're uh, during a 24 hour campaign like Giving Tuesday. A lot of stuff is going to happen. You have to be there. You have to be prepared. You have to be prepared for the unexpected that might happen. Uh, but more importantly, you want to be replying to people, expressing appreciation, and being a part of the community, right? Being a part of the community. I always say support and encourage, support and encourage, support and encourage. That's your job the whole day long, support and encourage, okay? Uh, and then finally, say thanks. So make sure that you say thanks and report back the results of the campaign. And in this case, we're talking about Giving Tuesday, right? So you can report back on Instagram, report back on Twitter, report back on Facebook, and always make the result about your community. Look at what you guys did. You guys did an amazing job. Look at what you did. And you can uh, obviously use email as well. And if you have a blog, go for it. Post a blog post, right? Uh, so that's it. Now I'm going to open it up for questions. See, that was fairly painless.